we're deploying the safest scooter there is, moving people around the city without destroying the environment. Ojo Electric Corp is a client and sponsor of PinnacleDigest.com, whose parent company owns shares of Ojo Electric Corp. Please read the full disclosure at the end of this video. In 2017, Bird, which is now an electric scooter unicorn and market leader, deployed its scooters in California. A great industry test case, Bird was among the first movers. While it came with challenges and controversy, the launch ended up proving that consumers would be willing to ride electric scooters around town. Electric scooters were viewed as fun, cool, cost-conscious way to get from point A to B. From there, which was barely two years ago, the industry heated up, drawing in hundreds of millions of dollars from VCs. Massive companies, such as Ford and Uber, put their weight behind players in the e-scooter game. Thanks to its rapid growth in such a short time span, the electric scooter space is very competitive, with several new entrants coming to the market over the last year or two, particularly in the US. But one of the big questions, and it's a huge question mark surrounding the sustainability of this new industry, is economics. Virtually no electric scooter companies providing units for consumers to rent make money. From our research, they often bleed cash. There are a host of economic and technological challenges in the space, ranging from theft, damage, evolving regulations, safety and insurance, battery capacity constraints, the lifespan of units, just to name a few. All of these elements add risks and costs to players in the space, yet the industry is believed to be ripe for consolidation, according to several market commentators. I'm about to learn more about the potential keys to creating an economically sustainable electric scooter rental business, one of the world's newest forms of ride sharing. Sustainability is a major goal and challenge for a startup known as Ojo, which recently rolled out its first launch, custom engineered scooters for rent by consumers in Austin, Texas and Hoboken, New Jersey. The company aims to increase its electric scooter footprint in several other U.S. cities in the near term. Ojo's co-founder, Don Ratner, has helped bring more than one billion worth of famous toys and licensed products to market for brand names as large as Nintendo, Disney, and Coca-Cola. Max Smith, Ojo's CEO, has successfully raised capital for companies while helping drive business growth, resulting in him being a part of eight exits. He and I will be delving into the business of electric scooters and the differentiators he believes Ojo brings to the space. Central to Ojo's belief and supporting goals is that the electric scooter, rentable by the minute through a smartphone app, can help replace personal cars and ride-hailing commutes. For those who doubt electric scooters, also known as e-scooters, numerous consumer use cases, particularly in densely populated cities, tell an interesting story. A 2017 Santa Monica Planning Commission report stated that 53% of all private vehicle trips are under three miles, and nearly 18% are under one mile. Those trips for individuals don't require a big, bulky, and costly vehicle. Scooters, from a functionality and efficiency standpoint, can fill that gap in many instances. Let's hook up with Max Smith, Ojo CEO, to learn more. Max's most notable successful exits came as CFO of Maker Studios, where he helped negotiate the sale of Maker to Disney for roughly $675 million. Max, it's great to be with you in Venice Beach, California. Um, you know, you can pretty much do anything at this point. Why the e-scooter business? What's got you so pumped up and excited about electric scooters? Yeah, so you know, I've had eight exits now. In each one of those exits, I was really using technology to disrupt an existing product or service. Here, there's a much bigger opportunity. So let's define the problem. Global uh, mobility is about a $7 trillion industry. Cars and trucks are about $2 trillion of that. Here's the thing. Cars and trucks in the US alone contribute 20% of the global gases and emissions that are destroying the environment, right. global warming. You look at population trends, 55% of the people now live in urban areas. That's going up to 65% over the next 10 years. So within urban areas, 53% of all vehicle trips are under three miles. That's what we want to go after. So we've created a scooter, the safest, most sustainable scooter to offer transportation, moving people safely around the city without destroying the environment with those harmful emissions. Let's talk about the brass tax, the economics of it all. So we have a per ride start, $1.25 to start a ride, and then it's 18 to 29 cents per minute. So with those economics, yeah. our average ride is about $6. About two, two miles, $6, okay. about three rides a day. Each scooter should earn about $17 a day. And how many scooters do you have out right now? We have 250 out in three cities, Austin, Dallas, and Hoboken. We were just approved from Memphis, Tennessee as well. 
Competition is intense in this space. You've got huge companies like Uber, Alphabet, Lime, you know, Bird, just to name a few. How are you guys gonna steal market share from these behemoths? Yeah, so those companies, they're pioneers, right? And they did a lot of great things for the industry, put a spotlight on it. Yeah. We took a different approach. While they were launching here two years ago, we were building the scooter. We already had our scooter built. And so we're deploying the safest scooter there is. So we went into Austin, Texas, probably one of the busiest markets mm -hmm. back in January. Mm -hmm. And we, during South by Southwest, we had more rides per vehicle, longer average ride, longer duration of ride than anyone else in the industry. Why do you think that is? I think we built a better product. And so we have two, two things. We start with the product, and then we go to our go-to-market strategy. We partner with bike share companies, and so they've got fleet operations, battery swapping, repairs and maintenance, and we have all of our parking at existing bike share places. So it's already a place of mobility, and it creates order out of the chaos. Okay. Now, when you go into a new market, a new community, how does that work in terms of permits? Do you guys approach city council? How does that shake out? Yeah, it's a, it's a long government procurement process, and that's the way we approach everything. We want to work with cities. So Matt Tolan, our head of sales, has been the global head of sales for mobility companies for 25 years. Carry Limousine, Avis, Budget, Zipcar, and Wheels Up. So we have a very proactive, respective approach to city government and how we work with them. We've also developed technology, which can really cater to each day. Every city is different, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to know where do we operate? Where can we not ride? What's a slow ride zone? And then through our GPS, through our telematics, we can program every city for, so the scooter acts differently in certain areas. From speed limits, everything. Speed limits, we have variable speed from 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And so a city could say, if you're on college campus, you can only go eight miles an hour. In this area, you can go 20 miles an hour. Along the waterfront, this beach path, that's blacked off, so you cannot ride there. And so we can push those changes. They can change their mind tomorrow. We push those changes over the air, changes the, the, uh, the effect and operation of every scooter. I just want to talk about the user experience, Max. When someone walks up and decides they want to jump on this thing, how does it work? How easy is it? Yeah, so, so through the app, you can find scooters. They're everywhere. And as you find them, there's really, it's zero acquisition cost. People see a, um, a QR code, walk up to a scooter with the app, unlock it, and that's it, you're ready to go. So th that, that's the entire process. So the process is find a scooter, unlock it, and then off you go. Bluetooth connected, you're done. Yeah, Bluetooth connected so you can listen to your music. The speakers are really important for audible alerts as well, safety audible alerts if we're going to change the speed on you or if it's a no ride zone. And what's the main demographic you guys are targeting? Like when people see scooters, they think millennials, you know, whipping around. What are you guys going after? Yeah, we clearly do um, have the, the millennials, um, micromobility to full-time um, rides or commuting for five to 10 miles. But we see, we see people 40, 50, 60 years of age as well. Right. And so those are commuters and they feel comfortable on this. They're doing rides on this, they've got a basket, you're doing chores, you're picking up things at the grocery store. We've arrived in New York, and the first thing you notice is that everybody is going somewhere. People are moving, in vehicles, by bike, and on foot. About 30 minutes from where I'm currently standing in Manhattan, Ojo has its scooters in operation, and that's where we're headed, to see things in action. So Max, this is super neat. We're at a ride-sharing station here. People have been jumping on and off these Ojos all afternoon. Can you take us through the typical interaction a rider has? Sure. So we're at a Jersey bike docking station and, okay. and every scooter needs to be stopped, parked at a Jersey bike station, yep. one of 36. And so they know where the stations are. Um, take out your phone, open up the app. It's a quick uh, scan of a QR code. Okay. And then you unlock the Ojo and start a ride and off you go. So that's it. It's on, you get it's on. on. You, you begin your ride, travel to wherever you need to be, yeah. and then now this is on, as you can see. Yeah. And drop it at one of the other 36 ride sharing stations. And then just hit end ride, and you're done. With millennials tight on time and money, the sharing economy is booming. 
With ease of use, zero emissions, and tied directly into a smartphone app, more and more consumers are choosing micromobility options like e-scooters. From the business side, there are still many questions regarding the sustainability of e-scooter rental companies. And for Max Smith and Ojo, this could be an opening if they can scale their e-scooter business and do so in a sustainable manner.